Hi there, my name is Josh. I have over 10 years of technical writing experience and I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ. I hope you had a chance to check out some of our other videos on this channel where we talk about many of the different aspects of becoming a great technical writer. I encourage you to go ahead and watch them after this video if you haven't. And now let's go ahead and remember what technical writing is with this video. And we'll be looking at the different types of technical writing. And the goal of technical writing is to simplify complex technical concepts for end users. And so we'll be looking at examples around that. And a technical writer creates documentation about technical or specialized topics such as computer applications, medical procedures, environmental regulations, and much more. And all these documents at the end of the day aim at informing, guiding, instructing, and commanding certain information so that a reader can understand and further use the details. But before we dive into the topic, make sure to go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. And that way you'll always get notified of great technical writing information and videos that help you become better at your job. And you'll see them in your YouTube newsfeed. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm sure you're familiar with this image. Who hasn't navigated straight to the FAQ section to clear doubts about a product or service? An FAQ is a list of questions paired with their answers that readers will likely ask about products, services, or other information presented on a website or in a customer-oriented document. By presenting commonly sought information in one place, FAQs save readers from searching through an entire website or document to find what they need. A good FAQ list can help create a positive impression with customers because a writer is acknowledging that their time is valuable. A FAQ section is a great example of a type of technical writing. Another example, and a very common one, is that of a tutorial. The type of document is a self-study guide for users of a product or system. You see them come with Amazon packages all the time, and they're either packaged with user manuals or provided electronically. Tutorials guide novice users through the operation of a product or system, and they're often more interactive and specific than a book or a lecture. A tutorial seeks to teach by example and supply the information to complete a certain task. A tutorial can be taken in many forms ranging from a set of instructions to complete a task to an interactive problem solving session. Due to the sensitive nature of most technical writing documents, the excellence of technical writing is judged by clarity, accuracy, as well as comprehensiveness, accessibility, conciseness, professional appearance, and correctness. And you must also follow these five key principles. So having a clear purpose, so that means to inform or to persuade, and it should be audience focused. So always consider the document's backgrounds and the audience backgrounds or concerns, needs, and attitudes towards the purpose. And the content should be concise. So the content needs to be specifically directed to the audience, clearly written, and the appropriate language must be used, and you should be using active voice then it should also be visually attractive. And not many people think of technical writing in visuals, but it's such a huge part of it. And that means good page design and use of graphs and charts. And most important is to be ethical. This means being truthful, full disclosure without plagiarizing anything. And then we wanna ask, you know, to whom is this type of technical writing directed to? Technical writing documents are written keeping the focus on the type of audience being targeted. Thus, each piece of such technical writing has three main audiences. The most common audiences are readers with little to no knowledge about the subject. Writing to non-experts means more explanation and that plain language is required. As a traditional vocabulary of the area of expertise, they usually won't understand that. It's vital to ensure all the information necessary for the target audience is provided. And then we have readers with the same knowledge. If the work is written for other professionals in the field, it's safe to use the same jargon, terminology, and underlying concepts. With this audience, how to communicate concepts is typically less urgent than understanding why. And then we have readers with professional knowledge. Technical-oriented writers sometimes write researches or instructions aimed at readers who know more about the subject material than they do. When writing to an expert audience, it's key to not add any unnecessary information and explanation. As you can see, technical writing is a broad concept that refers to a number of writings used in research, engineering, and skill traits. In technical writing, the major types of documents can be divided into four major types. We have traditional technical writing, mainly used for education and teaching, and includes scientific and medical papers, thesis, and books. 
And then we have end user documentation for manuals, instructions, assembly guides, procedures, and we have technical marketing communications, also referred to as day-to-day -day business documentation. And this includes reports, memos, white papers, case studies, and a tiny area of technical writing that sometimes is left out, which is called patents. And I'm sure you're familiar with the word patent and what patents are. And just to give you a brief explanation, it's a form of intellectual property that gives a right to the inventor, excluding others from making, using, or selling an invention for a certain period of time. Now let's go ahead and study these groups in more depth and start with traditional technical writing. This group may appear to be wide, but the content of this category is created primarily for professional audiences. For specialized research papers, these specialists rely on traditional technical writing. This category includes scientific and medical papers. Since research findings might be difficult to explain, scientists work with technical writers to interpret and organize them. As these findings are published in medical and scientific journals, the presentation of the data requires meticulous attention to detail accuracy and structure. These articles serve as learning tools for research practitioners who want to ultimately better understand processes and outcomes. As with any form of research, technical writers ensure that proper credibility is given in the text. So let's go ahead and continue with reports and reviews. Outside of the scientific community, technical writers work in a variety of fields to communicate between professionals. This can include, for instance, legal case reviews, technical diagrams and schematics, and sometimes correspondence related to technical material. Reports are written by a researcher which contains the details about the process, the progress, and the results of a project. This document is meant to convey a specific message or to perform a particular function rather than to teach the reader about a topic. Such reports may contain procedures, design criteria, research history, images or illustrations, and other data relevant to the project. Here you can see an example of a type of report, a grant report. This type of document is a formal way to update your funders on what you've accomplished with their grant money. Most funders have some grant reporting guidelines, but some have no guidelines at all. While the latter may sound great, it can be hard to write a grant report without a format to follow because then you have to rely more on instinct, which can sometimes be very difficult for people. To give a general idea of the structure of a good report, let's review its sections. When it comes to the writing of a technical report, the format is very important because it's unique from other reports and that it carries technical information. And this information needs to be planned well. So how is the overall structure of a report? It starts with a title page which contains the report title, the author, the date, the name of the person commissioning the report, the objective of the report, and then we have an executive summary. In case of a short report, an executive summary can be handed out to people instead of the whole report. It's often less than one page. It contains the main information, the summary, conclusions, and recommendations. In case of longer reports, it has to include a table of contents. So that includes sections and page references. And it may also include an introduction, the background of the report, what is included, methods and procedures for getting the information. It may also have acknowledgments of help. And then we have the main body discussion. This is the longest part of the report and includes all the details organized into headings and subheadings. And we have summary and conclusions where you summarize the reason for the report and the conclusions such as a potential solution to a problem. And we have recommendations to highlight the preferred course of action. If there is more than one recommendation, then it should be numbered. And we want appendices for any extra information such as illustrations, questionnaires using preparing the report, or a bibliography. And the last thing here is having references, which can be optional. Now let's keep going with end user documentation. Many products require written explanations and instructions for users to understand and operate them effectively. In fact, these can be such an important element of the final package that they're often considered part of the product itself. After all, what good is a feature of a software program if you don't know how to use it? A technical writer working in this field must write as clearly and concisely as possible using layman's language and describing any technical terminology required. A product's output can take many different forms, including the following. We have product manuals. Frequently, a product is accompanied with hard copy documentation that explains all the product's features in great detail, assembly guides. Technical writing includes step-by-step -step assembly instructions, which need to be carefully crafted to ultimately ensure that the 
end user can complete the steps safely and accurately. And we have quick start guides. Products sometimes include a brief introductory guide to get a user started on working with its features. These documents do not include comprehensive information covering all elements. Instead, they focus on clear and concise directions for getting the user started and are also commonly seen with smartphones. And we have user help functions. Much of the technical writing for end user software documentation takes place electronically. Technical writers build interactive guides where users can look for information specifically related to a question they have about a product. This helps them troubleshoot as they encounter obstacles in using the product. And then we have technical books, often related to software products and with certain kinds of hardware. Third party authors often write full length guides to help users thoroughly learn the ins and outs. Here you have an example of a quick start guide. As you can see, this guide has well summarized how to get started with this sports cam. It helps a user to navigate through the camera features, how to record and have overall control of the gadget. And the ultimate goal of end user documentation is helping users figure out an otherwise complicated process. There are a lot of elements that can accomplish this. Simple language when it comes to any form of technical writing, perhaps the most important thing is the simplicity of language, especially for user documentation targeted at end users who don't have technical knowledge and even the most and even the most advanced feature should be broken down the simplest way possible to effectively explain its functionality and how to get the most out of it. And we have a good flow. The second most crucial element of all successful user documentation is having a logical flow as the goal is to deliver a coherent experience to the user in a way that makes it feel like they're having a seamless transition with understanding everything. And this usually happens by solving one problem at a time. Next, we have using visuals. The best user documentation often has visuals. Visuals can help simplify a complicated process and make it easier to understand. To that end, in addition to written instructions of a process, I highly recommend that you also show the users how it's done. Examples of visuals can include illustrations, screenshots, GIFs, or even short tutorial videos. And then we have accessibility. All the digital documentation should be accessible to everyone. This includes optimizing your content in a way that it shows up properly on both desktop and mobile devices and can be communicated to users who are blind or deaf. For example, if you have your user documentation on a website, you might want to include an option that allows visually impaired users to listen to the instructions. Similarly, for those with audio impairment, ensure that the written content is clearly visible. And we have more resources. So last year, your user documentation should include additional resources that users might find useful to complete their objectives or anything related to it. Any sort of link that leads to an online help or contact details that get them in touch with a support team can work here. These details should be included throughout the documentation or towards the end of the document. It must be shocking to see the word marketing since we are talking about technical writing, but technical writers also engage in persuasive content development, often working in connection with marketing and sales teams. To persuade, after all, content often needs to be precise and credible, so technical writing easily fits in. Here are some examples you might take on within this category. We have white papers. A long form marketing project, white papers are designed to thoroughly investigate a topic that presents a problem for a specific audience. These reports will recommend a solution that highlights a company's products. And then we also have case studies. Technical writers are often involved in explaining in detail a specific account and how a business goal was successfully met or overcame or how a challenge was overcame working with a company's product. And we have brochures. Often technical writers are called on for product brochures or online descriptions that go into a deeper level of detail about how a product functions. And we have proposals. Many business to business sales efforts involve a formal proposal process wherein the proposer must draw plans and specifications for a solution in detail. Technical writers often work as part of a team to handle the more technical aspects of this writing. Let's review some of the tips on how to write an efficient proposal. This document is a path to growing and solidifying a business relationship. Writing a good proposal takes time, patience, and above all, thought. There are a few basic stylistic points to keep in mind. It's about the client. Even though a proposal entails talking about the company and how it can help the client, 
The emphasis should always be on them. What are their needs, their goals, and how the company can help the client achieve them. Keep it short as time is important and don't waste either of your time or the clients with unnecessary language about the process or the company's history. If they want to know those things, then they'll just ask. And every sentence must be substantial. Highlight the important points and stop there. Be honest and don't promise services or goals that cannot and will not be fulfilled. Business relationships are built on trust. So you want to earn the client's trust by being open, honest, and clear about what the company can do for them. Check, edit, proofread, and proofread again. Typos are embarrassing. You don't want things like wrong dates, numbers, or names, which can end business relationships without even starting one. The time to proofread the proposal is crucial. It is highly recommended to get someone else to read through the proposal before you go ahead and send it off. And often, because you are the technical writer, this might just be you reviewing your own work. So you have to take a step aside and then come back to it with some more clarity. And last but not least, we have patents. This type of technical writing gives an inventor a short-term monopoly on a device, design, or process, which can be extended 20 years from filing. And we had mentioned this a little bit earlier. The US Patent and Trademark Office clearly states a definition and concept of a patent on its website. The patent application needs to be precise and detailed and its contents have to have a high legalistic terminology since attorneys are involved and will make decisions about what is patentable and where a patent infringement exists. To a large extent, the precision of the language affects how successfully the monopoly will be and how much money the creator will make. Different types of patent applications exist so that inventors can protect different kinds of inventions. There are four types of patents as it follows. We have utility patent. This patent is a long technical document that teaches the public how to use a new machine, process, or system. New technologies such as genetic engineering and internet-delivered software are challenging the boundaries of what kinds of inventions can be granted the utility patent protection. And we have provisional patent. The United States law allows inventors to file a less formal document that proves the inventor was in possession of the invention and had adequately figured out how to make the invention work. Once that is on file, the invention is patent pending. If, however, the inventor fails to file a formal utility patent within a year from filing the provisional patent, they will lose the filing date. And we have design patent. This patent offers protection for an ornamental design on a useful item, the shape of a bottle or the design of a shoe, for example. These things can be protected by a design patent. The document itself is almost entirely made of pictures or drawings of the design on the useful item. And then we have a plant patent, exactly how it sounds like. A plant patent protects new kinds of plants produced by cuttings or other non-sexual means. Plant patents generally do not cover genetically modified organisms and focus more on conventional horticulture. Maybe it was your first time hearing about patents and its types. Let's discuss the process of writing a patent application. The single most important thing in writing a patent application is for the attorney to thoroughly understand the invention. If the attorney does not understand the invention and does not appreciate the subtle nuances of the technology, the attorney cannot write a good application. After this, the process begins simply with the description of the invention and together with the claims section, which defines the boundaries of patent protection and is often referred to as the specification. As the word suggests, in these sections of the patent application, it's specified what the machine or process is and how it differs from previous patents and technology. When writing the description, the following order is recommended. We have title of the application, technical field, background information and prior art, an outline of efforts by previous patent applicants who have worked in the same field as the petitioner, and a description of how the invention addresses a technical problem. And then we have the summary of the invention, which is usually a list of illustrations, a detailed description of the invention with examples of the intended use, a sequence listing if relevant, and after this, it's time to write the claim section, which defines the subject matter to be protected by the patent and technical terms. This is the legal basis for the patent protection, a boundary line around the patent that lets others know when the rights are infringed. The limits of this line are defined by the words and phrasing of your claims, which is why it's important to be clear and concise when writing them. And you can finish off with an abstract and some drawings. That brings us to the end of this video, but before I'd like to leave you with some final thoughts on the examples of technical writing, we could think that a topic like this one wouldn't give us such a variety of 
examples and different types, but as we humans rely on communication skills to convey our thoughts and opinions, over time we have managed to narrow down every single one of our communication needs to accurately interconnect with each other. As you can see in the next image, technical writing has a wide spectrum of document types, all directed to specific audiences with specific purposes and objectives. Technical writing gives technical disciplines and professions a space to express themselves, keeping communication flowing in the required style and tone. And if you're interested in becoming a technical writer and you want to level up your game in technical writing, then I recommend you check out our courses on Technical Writer HQ, which we provide certifications for getting new skills in technical writing. And we help you get that job that you really want or get your first step into the field. And we have tons of information there from how to write a great technical writer resume to how to apply for jobs effectively and ultimately how to write better. So I'd love to see you there. And I've left that link in the description below the video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of everything technical writing. And I wish you the best of success on your career journey and cheers.